On this week's show, we're taking you back in time as Jeff visits the Rolling Oldies Vintage Trailer Rally and checks out some timeless classic RVs. And we'll join Ivan caravanning in Australia as she visits a well-known local farmer for some fresh and unique Australian produce. These stories and more on this week's Rolling On TV. Closed and Spanish captioning, where available, is sponsored by Jayco. At Jayco, we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. Vintage trailers and RVs are growing in popularity these days. We're here at Fort Stevens State Park in beautiful Northwest Oregon at a rally put on by the Roland Oldies Vintage Trailer Club. Well, it's hard to say exactly what the appeal is of these older RVs. But as my friend Chris Hemer, the technical director for Trailer Life magazine, phrased it so eloquently, there's something serious missing from a lot of today's newer models, and that is charm. And when it comes to charm, these old guys have got it in buckets. Let's take a look around and we'll show you what we mean. Okay, Rolling Oldies Vintage Trailers is actually not a club, it's a group. And we have approximately 5,000 members on Facebook. We do have 500 members. This is a rally, one of our rallies of six at Fort Stevens. It's a lot of fun. I mean, it's a family oriented. It's not just for retired people like us. Uh, we have a lot of kids in the group, uh, a lot of families, and we we usually try and pick state parks because they're a little bit more friendly. We do have a rally at Riverbend, which we buy out. And Riverbend is near Sweet Home, Oregon, near Foster Dam. And we have approximately 70 sites that we put vintage trailers into. To be a participant in our group, the trailer has to be 1980 or older. It can be a retro which means that if it's made to the basic design of past trailers, or it can be a homemade trailer, in other words, if somebody took a frame and built it up with the same design, we do allow those in. We do take teardrops in, we do take motorhomes in. In fact, we're gaining a few motorhomes into our group. And we have uh, several people that have done restorations from the frame up on it. Okay, uh, this is uh, Flight Camp's very first trailer that they've ever restored. Um, it's a 1963 Silver Streak Sabre, 17 foot. And uh, Flight Camp found it in a field uh, sunk to its axle, axle. And they had pulled it out of the uh, field and restored it. We bought it, we've had it like four and a half years and we love it. And this event, we're embracing the flamingo and we're camping with Roland Oldies. The trailer on the inside is all original equipment, except there's a new fridge, which has had the uh, old panel from the original refrigerator that just slipped right in there. Uh, it's got the original turquoise stove refrigerator and um, it's got all original upholstery, and we really like that. It's in perfect condition, and uh, we just love it to death. The vintage trailer is a 1956 Roadmaster, 21 foot. Uh, I have not found out where it's made. Uh, the trailer is in original condition, except for a repaint on the outside using the original design. The trailer, the original cabinetry, a tile floor, rear bed, uh, side bathroom, uh, original table up front, original couches up front. Well, I've been married to my wife uh, for 22 years and she told me one day a couple years ago after we got started in the vintage trailers that I finally found something that she liked to do. So at this time we have five other trailers, uh, total of five trailers. Uh, we belong to a few organizations and we do trailer rallies seven, eight times a year. We also have a uh, classic car we tow a teardrop with that I do car shows and major uh, car shows up and down the coast. 
This is a 1954 Aloha travel trailer. She's partially restored. She has original interior. She's 13 feet long. Um, 1954 is the original date of production. So she is as old as they come. And she's built in Aloha, Oregon. They're made super sturdy to withstand the Pacific Northwest weather. We love to bring our family out and camp and We've always loved vintage trailers and vintage anything, clothes, music, everything, furniture. So it kind of mixes all that together for our family and it's just a great family thing for us to do. <laughs> so this is a 66 Kinskill trailer. It was uh, manufactured in Sun Valley, California, sold in Portland and uh, Briefly took a tour to Idaho and back, and it's uh, Oregon licensed. It's just a, a, a great trailer, a little heavy, as the earlier trailers were, but uh, we, we bought it without any um, special work that needed to be done. It's all original on the inside. Turquoise is the color, so it's got turquoise appliances and all. All I've done is paint it the original color, which was faded, add a little bit of uh, uh, diamond sheeting to the front to protect for rock chips and I painted the wheels and put uh, the uh, plastic chrome on them just to sort of highlight it. It's a great trailer, we just love it, it's our regular camper. We'll be back for a look at more classic RVs right after these commercial messages, so stay tuned to Rolling On TV. Simply put, Thetford's AquaCam has outsold all its competitors combined because it's the strongest holding tank deodorant available. It provides the strongest odor control around the clock in all temperatures and conditions. It quickly liquefies waste and tissue and is 100% biodegradable. AquaCam, the industry standard for 50 years. For more information, visit Thetford.com. AquaCam, another great product from Thetford. It all starts with pride and ends up being the gold standard in pop-up truck campers. Four-wheel campers. Need we say more? See for yourself by visiting fourwheelcampers.com. Welcome back to Rollin' On TV. Let's continue our look at some classic RVs on display at the recent Rollin' Oldies Rally at Fort Stevens State Park, Oregon. Okay, the trailer is a 1947 Westwood Coronado built by West Craft. Flight Camp in, in Bend, Oregon is, are the people that did the restoration. Basically from the ground up, they stripped everything out of the inside. All the cabinetry is original, refinished. The only thing that was actually repaired was the tabletop. It did have a, like a hole in it, not all the way through, just the top layer was ripped out. So they replaced that and fixed it. The stove is a replacement. They had the original 47 in it. We didn't care for it. It looked like a microwave more than a stove. And the refrigerator is original, still works today. They were both painted pink. Uh, there was some pink coloring on the top of the trailer. It was basically a green, kind of a washed out green. Had a hole in the very front of it where the Forest Service had put in a wood stove. It's our assumption, we don't know that for a fact, but that's what we all assume because it did come from the Forest Service. They had it last and it was found over by Lapine. We go to four or five rallies every year and have since we got the trailer, and I guess when we get it three years ago. And we've got two more to go to this year, one in, in Lebanon and one at Shampui State Park. So what we have here is a 1966 Lifetime Town & Country Class A motorhome. It's 17 feet long. It's pretty much original other than a previous owner added carpet, which will come back out. Um, we're here at the Rolling Oldies Vintage Trailer Club, uh, uh, Vintage Trailer Rally. This is the only motorized RV here. 
I uh, found this, uh, this vehicle on Craigslist in uh, the Boise Craigslist ad. Um, it took about a day to talk my wife into letting me get it. Um, flew out to Boise, drove it back through Bend, um, and we live in Sheridan, so we drove it all the way to Sheridan. And uh, it's just been a great little vehicle, gets lots of attention. Uh, everyone, you know, when you drive it in town, everyone looks at it, they smile. Yeah, inside is all original materials, again, except for the carpet, um, gauges and everything. There's original kitchen, bathroom in there. Uh, did have the seat reupholstered and, and added the curtains, which aren't original, um, just to make it flow with the theme, which uh, we're going with the red and white. Um, we did name it. We had a big contest on Craig's, or on uh, on the Facebook page, the Rolling Oldies Facebook page, to name it, and we decided on Rosie because we figured it looked with the front end, it looked like uh, Rosie, the robot from the Jetsons. So, but uh, yeah, it's been a real treat. For more information about the Rolling Oldies Vintage RV Group, log on to our website at RollingOnTV.com. About the produce, about the fish, about the sea, the Great Barrier Reef. Coming up, we'll head down under Woody Vine. But first, a word from our sponsors. Is it now the perfect time to turn your old pop-up tent trailer from looking like this to looking like this? Treat yourself and your family to a bug-free camping season with a new tent canvas from Canvas Replacements. To learn more or to order a new canvas, visit canvasreplacements.com or call 800-232-2079. At Pleasureway, it's what goes on here that you can't see that makes all the difference here in what you do see. Pleasureway Class B Motorhomes. Built for living, built for life. To learn more and to find a dealer nearest you, visit our website at pleasureway.com. We're here in beautiful Bowen, Queensland, Australia, and this is a sensational laid back hidden gem of the Queensland coast. It's in the north end of the Whit Sundays, and let me tell you, it is spectacular. We're here at Bowen's Big Four Coral Coast Holiday Park, and just up the walk, this away, is gorgeous Horseshoe Bay. It is absolutely spectacular. A little further on is Rose Bay, where you can wade in the water and see coral absolutely beautiful Kings Beach. There's a lovely downtown with the Grand Hotel, by the way, where they filmed the movie Australia with Nicole Kidman and Hugh Jackman. And it is a wonderful place to get some pie downtown as well. And speaking of delicious food, I'm here with Farmer Carl Walker from Phantom Produce. And he's brought us all of this absolutely gorgeous, amazing local produce. He is uh, kind of the grand poobah of growers in this area. Farmer Carl, thank you for joining us. Tell us about you and uh, everything that you do. Um, well, I'm, I'm, my name's Carl Walker. I'm, I have my own farm, Bowen and Produce. Um, uh, I'm actually the chairman and president of the Bowen Gumloo Growers Association. So I represent, um, we grow 10,000 hectares of, of produce around here. We do, as you can see, all the stuff here, but beans and corn and, and uh, eggplant and pretty much anything you can think of. Um, we are the largest winter growing vegetable area in Australia. Ooh. Um, so pretty much uh, Australia relies on us for their food during winter because this is our winter. As you can tell, it's, just, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, most people down south wouldn't see this in summertime. And we've got this in winter. We've got the Great Barrier Reef. So we've got all here, we've got everything. We've got, we've got the food on the land, we've got the food in the ocean, beautiful views, um, and Bowen's full of beautiful people. And um, I hope lots of your listeners and, you as actually come and visit us because we, we, we actually like Americans. Do you? They're okay. I've been there a few times and I quite enjoy them. They're, they're good fun. Well, I'll tell you, this is just such a spectacular hidden gem. I'm surprised that more people don't know about it, but it makes me think that you guys want to keep it a little bit of a secret. Well, what happens is, is because you've got Alley Beach, which is just south of us, um, which is, everyone thinks of Alley Beach, Hamilton Island, um, so people go there and, and quite honestly, it's nice, 
but it's not like that. Well, you have brought some fantastic produce, uh, so why don't you tell us about this unusual looking guy and everything else you've got here. Well, that's, that's a, a white cucumber. A um, white cucumber. I jokingly call that, as I said before, a, an old people's cucumber. Okay. Um, because a green cucumber sometimes can repeat on you. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it was a white one. It's more low acid, so it doesn't repeat on you the same. So you can actually eat that when you get a bit older like me, um, and it doesn't repeat on you. Let's cut this open. Yeah, Let's cut it see. open. Does it look just like that one No, inside? it doesn't. It's actually got more seed cavity. Oh, it does. Okay. So when you chop it up. So let's do this. You can actually look in the middle of it, and it's actually got a lot more seed in than, than, a, than a green one. Oh. Oh, it looks lovely. But it's, it's a very nice, very nice cucumber to, to eat. Let's just find out about that. <laughs> no, not for me. I'm good. Mm, mm. It's really great. So what else have we got? We've got obviously got tomato or tomato, 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 and um, <laughs> we've got. Uh, <laughs> Other way known as tomato. <laughs> Why tomato? not potato? What's that? Why not potato? <laughs> no, 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 no. You can't go that far. All right, just checking. <laughs> just checking. Um, and we've obviously got some, some uh, we call them capsicums, you call them peppers? That's right. We call them capsicums, and these are actually orange capsicums. They're a little bit sweeter than a normal, normal capsicum. We've also got a green green pepper, green capsicum. Green capsicum. Um, we've got a yellow one. Mm -hmm. We've also got a red one. I actually grow all these all these colours for little different markets. Um, and because these are the biggest sellers. The reds. reds. Biggest sellers are reds. Second biggest seller is green. Then yellow, then the orange. Now you told me a spectacularly interesting way that you use the capsicums on the grill. So tell my lovely viewers what you do with your capsicums. Well, in Australia we like a barbie. A barbie. You know, a, bit, a bit like um, Paul Hogan right, put right. a shrimp on the barbie. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Well, we like doing barbies, and and but we don't like doing dishes. Surprise. Surprise. So what we do when we're cooking an egg on the barbie, we slice. Them into rings. Shall I? No, no, chop it that way. Into chop a ring. it this way. Yep. Into a nice ring. Into okay. a nice ring. How uh, thick? Uh, as thick as you want. Depends how much you like cutting here. Th a thin ring or a thick ring. Whatever you like to eat, really. Mm, well, I, I, I reckon something like this might cook up nicely. Yep, and you just um, you drop an egg in it and cook it on the barbie. So you just, would just go. Yep. Right in there like that. Yep. Fry it up. Fry Do it you up. Flip it. Oh, if you want it, depends whether you like it sunny side or not. Okay. Whatever, okay, you, whatever, okay. whatever, whatever rattles, your, rattles your tree, hey. Whatever rattles my tree. And um, just flick it over and chuck it on your sandwich. You so it on the bread? Yep, and put it with your steak and your salad and your tomato. Oh, <laughs> let's cut up some tomato. And, um, and then you just take a bite, and every time you take a bite, you get a little bit of flavour from the capsicum. I love it. Do you use oil, a little olive oil or anything yeah, on it? Yeah, a little bit on there. Okay. Just a, a little salt and pepper maybe? Whatever, whatever, whatever you like. Okay. Eh? All right. How about this? What what variety of tomatoes are these? Well, actually, I, mm. I, um, I think these mm. are called I think these are mm. called pinnacles. These are actually from my neighbour. As you can see, they do a very nice tomato. It's lovely. It's it's just and these are beautiful. actually growing on a um, these are growing on a trellis. So you actually plant on them. On a trellis. It's so actually plant them and you put wires up and, and help mm -hmm. them grow. Mm -hmm. So they all hang down nicely, and that's why that there's no marks on them. And they look so perfect because they're not wow. touching the ground, they're just hanging down. Right. And the cherry tomatoes. Oh, can't forget those. Oh, look at the cherry tomatoes. Is this your logo? That's our logo, yes, Phantom Projects. Right yep. here. Can you see this? How cool is that? All right, let's try one of these. Did you grow these? Yes, yeah, they come right. from my place. They do, no so. pressure. No pressure, no, no pressure. No pressure. Mm. Mm. Nice and sweet. Mm. That's a really beautiful little burst of flavor. Mm. And they are quite mm. nice. The cherry tomatoes are very. Just mm. a, actually, I have truck drivers come in. I normally give them. They ask me for some, and I go give them a punnet, and they eat them like lollies. So they um, go drive down the highway, and they eat them, leave them like lollies. So Is this a punnet? It's called a punnet. Yeah. And they just pop them. Just pop them, pop them, pop them pop. like pills. Yeah. Pop them. I, can't, <laughs> I can't blame them. They're delicious. I thank you so much for joining us here today. No, you're welcome, and I, I hope I hope that you've enjoyed beautiful bone and. And our produce, and I, I, I really hope that, that your, your viewers come to um, come to Bowen. And so um, if anyone comes to Bowen, just come and say good day. Come and say good day because we like having visitors and we like showing our farms off, and and we definitely like sharing our beautiful produce.
You can learn a little bit more about Bowen, about the produce, about the fish, about the sea, the Great Barrier Reef, and the Whit Sundays. All the beautiful, lovely adventures you can have here in Bowen, Queensland, Australia. Never run out of propane again. With Level Check, there's no more guesswork. Just run the gauge over the tank, and when the light turns from red to green, you'll know exactly how much propane you have left. It's that simple. Level Check, another great product from Truma. For more information, visit levelcheck.com. At Jayco, we're a lot more than just an RV manufacturer. We're all about family. And we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. To see our complete product line and find your nearest Jayco dealer, visit us online at jayco.com or just log on to rollingontv.com. Sooner or later, most people who own RVs have to put them into storage for a little while. It can be just a few days if you're really lucky and you use it a lot, or it can be longer, like six months or so, like over a winter. Now, keeping the air clean and dry inside of the RV is a major challenge when it's in storage. If it's dry, it helps to deter the growth of mildew and mold and uh, bacteria and things that cause odors inside. And you don't want to open it up at the beginning of the season and get that funky smell. It's hard to get rid of. Now there are various mechanical devices you can use to keep it dry. A uh, dehumidifier, for example, that you have to plug in. And there's also little chemical packets you can buy to do that. But Anne, I understand that there's an even simpler and easier solution to keeping the air dry. You got that right, Jeff. It's as simple as kitty litter. Kitty litter. You bet. So it all comes back down to poo. <laughs> it always uh, does. Okay. Yeah, it does. <clears throat> all right. So we got the kitty litter. What do we do with it? Well, you want to get a Tupperware type container with a lot of surface area and pour a little bit of that in there. Okay. About an inch deep. And I noticed that this one has um, what looks like the little green chlorophyll chunks in it. Is that uh, an important part of the project? Actually it is. Um, the chlorophyll uh, is activated by the air and is really important for the deodorization of oh, the, I see. the odors you're trying okay. to get rid of. So. And then what do we do with this now that we've got it filled? Well, when you're ready to put your rig in storage, you're gonna want to just stash this somewhere in um, the space. If okay. you have a big rig, you can use two. Okay, this is a fairly small one, so, it's so the one will probably do the trick. Yep. So we'll just take it and stick, stick it under a table mm -hmm. or on a counter or something like that. Correct. Okay. And how long is this going to last me? I, I use it for the storage season, which for me can be two months, three months. And then when you get it back out of storage, you're ready to use your rig again. Spring comes and you just take it out from where you got it stashed. Okay. And um, put it, you know, someplace out of your rig. Okay. And then you, do you, you need, can reuse you it. You need to put the lid back on, right? Right. Okay. And you can <clears throat> reuse it um, in the next season if you want. But if you don't want to, just throw it out. It's, yeah, it's inexpensive. So yeah, it's pretty cheap. So you can do. Okay. Yep. Let me see. Very cool. And that is our inside yeah. scoop. Oh. <laughs> Our inside scoop. Nice. Oh, which reminds me. In addition, if for some reason your RV's bathroom facilities are out of order and uh, you happen to have a really serious personal project coming on the horizon. Oh. We hope you enjoyed this week's show and for more information on anything you saw on the show, along with additional videos and stories, visit our website at rollingontv.com. For the latest up-to-the-minute RV news, visit our media partners at rvbusiness.com. For great recipes and RVing tips, be sure to visit Evan Schmatter at thervcookingshow.com. If you're into RVing or just appreciate vintage vehicles, be sure to set your GPS for the RV MH Hall of Fame in Elkhart, Indiana. 
This museum houses the largest collection of vintage RVs and trailers dating as far back as 1916. For more information, visit their website at rvmhhalloffame.org.